Hello, today we're going to do a Herdwick sheep in watercolour. I think I'm actually going to do the drawing in ink because um, I've already done it in pencil. I think I'm going to put some ink over the top of there and rub the pencil out. Um, just because I quite like the colour of this ink and I think it goes well with the Herdwick's fleece. So this one, I've, I can't tip it up, I've got the lid off it. So it's a Dale Arrowney one and it's a calligraphy one and it says non-clogging pigmented waterproof so that's what we want because we're going to be using watercolour over the top of it so we need a waterproof ink um, and that we can go over once it's dry so it actually says brown but it's quite it's more what I would call a, a sienna you know it's quite a ready brown okay so I wanted to talk to you first of all about drawing animals I see quite a few animals drawn and the tendency is to draw them because, especially with sheep, they've got a nice fluffy coat or wool, should we say. Um, people tend to draw them a bit like fluffy toys and they're not fluffy toys. They seem to forget that they've got a skeleton under there and with animals, often the skeleton's actually quite close to the surface as well. So with the sheep, you can see here the skull, there's an indentation there in the skull. You know, think about where the skull is and fit everything else on top of that. So, always get these shapes nicely of the skull underneath the face there. Also, another mistake people make is putting the ears on as if they're glued on afterwards, as if they're just stuck on. They're a part of the animal, they're attached, they continue, they're not just stuck on afterwards. So make sure they come down to where they should be meeting. Uh, this one's actually inside out a little bit, I think it's a windy day and his ears sort of flopping around. Okay, so do it as one. Make sure the ear is attached to the animal as it is on the animal. Look very carefully to how ears are attached. Not just on animals, look when you're doing portraits as well on people. Okay, and the other thing that people seem to tend to do quite a lot is, especially again with sheep, they'll draw a big block for the fleece and then stick the legs on underneath. You need to think about where that skeleton is to make it look believable. So we've got his neck coming down here. We can see that his neck's underneath there. Even though it's covered in wool, we know it's there. And we should know where his shoulders are. Um, so his shoulders, her shoulders probably actually, are coming along here and then this leg is attached. So when you start to draw a leg, start up here. Don't start by sticking it on down here underneath the fleece. The leg doesn't start here. The leg starts up here with the shoulder. Follow the shoulder down. Think about where the knee joint is and carry on. Same here, there's a shoulder here under all this wool and that carries on down. I've not drawn his feet, her feet because she's stood in a, a lot of long um, bracken actually so I've left that bit for the time being. Okay and she, he's, she's sort of foreshortened so we just see her back going away but again this is the shape of a tummy so we need that shape in and again this leg, the back end is here and that leg carries on down and then we've got the other leg coming from behind here. So again, even with the leg that's coming from behind, we should know that's roughly there where it comes from. Okay, so all the time, think about that skeleton underneath. Um, you might be drawing lambs at this time of year. When lambs are born, they've just got a little covering of flesh and, heart and a very tight little wool on them, the skinny little things. So you can see all the shape of the skull uh, in the face and you know you should be able to see where the shoulders are and where the, the hips are or the hocks. Um, okay, so don't draw them like they're a cuddly toy. If you want them to be realistic and look convincing, think about that skeleton underneath. And I've repeated myself a little bit there, but it's something that we seem to make a mistake of quite often. Okay, so I'm now gonna go and pop some ink on this. Like I said, I love the color of this ink. I'll then need to leave the ink to dry before we put some watercolor washes on. So I'll, I'll pop some music on while I do the drawing and then I'll come back to you when we do the washes.
Okay, so while it's still wet, I'm going to actually add a little bit of water to this ink just because that colour is so perfect for his fleece, her fleece. Now with Herdwigs, they're very distinctive for the white faces and these lovely fleeces, um, but you might not be familiar with them if you're not from around here. They're very local to Cumbria and the Lake District, so when you're in the Lake District, you'll you perhaps see them around well you will see them around but and you'll notice what lovely white faces they've got so that's you know one of the reasons I sort of chose them to do today so I'm just going to add a touch of water just in places not all over to a fleece where the where the darkest shadows are and just let some of that ink run because it's perfect colors that nice reddy brown we will also put some watercolor on top but I just thought while it was still wet we would let some of that ink move around the paper a bit and you can see where I went a little bit darker underneath the face where obviously a head's casting a shadow on a neck there just slightly darker down this side I think the lights may be coming more from this side And I'm just going to pick up some of that ink where it's a bit thicker with my brush and put some of these grassy shapes in as well. Just with the brush, very loosely. Adding a bit of water as well. Okay, so now we need to leave her to completely dry. You will see I made a mistake with the eye. I got far too much ink. It came off my pen, pen in a, a big lump where the eye was. I'm going to put the detail of the eye in later uh, when I've finished everything else. So I've just basically got the eye socket shape in there at the moment. Um, but I did very quickly just suck that um, ink up with a tissue and then put some water on to get the rest of it off. So it's it's not left the paper completely white there but it doesn't matter because that's we're going to be painting the eye in over that anyway okay so I'll leave that to dry now and then we'll come back and put some watercolor on as you can see I've put the picture now on an easel I've rubbed out those pencil marks I'm hoping you can see it okay you're at a bit of a funny angle there but hopefully you can see the whole thing um, and the reason I put it on an easel is because I want the paint to flow down um, the weather around here is very unpredictable and these little herdwicks are out in all weathers. The high up on the fells, they're very, very tough and they're out whatever the weather. I wanted to give the impression that this little herdwick was uh, out in the middle of nowhere with very unpredictable weather. So we're going to let some of that paint flow down. So what I'm doing here is I'm wetting the paper, but quite randomly I will leave some little areas, some dry patches, um, but I'm not wetting the sheep. So I'm, I'm going round the sheep leaving the sheep dry so that the paint doesn't run onto the sheep so it should just sort of run around it because like I say when that paper is dry the paint will be attracted to the wet areas of the paper rather than that dry spot where the sheep is so leaving some, very very roughly leaving some dry bits and some wet bits okay so plenty of water on there and I've mixed up I'm going to hold this up now hopefully you can see that I've mixed up an ultramarine a burnt sienna and a gamboge and we're just going to let them mix together on that wet paper so starting with the ultramarine I think I still had some gamboge left on my brush there from when I was mixing it I'm going to go right to the top with that I think So 
so not really painting as such just dropping the paint into the wet paper okay so you can see there that paper has been a bit dry down this side so I've always got my spray next to me and if there's some areas that are dry sorry I just kick the um, tripod then I just give it a bit of a spray and let that flow down okay so then we'll go on to the sienna similar colour to her coat which is nice and a nice warm colour but also a colour that we would find a lot around here in bracken of course one of the earth colours and I will put some further up as well because there might be some distant fells it's not necessarily sky up here we're just imagining a very very loose background um, and having some light and shade in it Okay, and again if there's any areas that you don't like or that you want to soften off, I'm just going to give another squirt to. Make it look as if it's raining while this is running down. And finally I'm going to put some of the gamboge. So this might be a bit of sun peeping through somewhere or it might be mixed with the blue and be part of the ground behind so come right up to her at this point so make that so that she's um, just go right round her there so that she's standing out against the background let these colours come right up to the edge of her fleece Okay, now I'm feeling we need to be a bit darker in places so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a darker mix out of the ultramarine and the burnt sienna but there's going to be a lot more pigment in those and a lot less water so that we're not introducing more water onto that paper or not a higher concentration anyway so it's a lower concentration of water when we add this next colour so it makes a nice dark grey if you add ultramarine to burnt sienna and I'm going to put some shadows underneath where she's standing I don't know whether to put any more colour up here or not I think I'll maybe leave that for now don't forget when you're doing your watercolours that these colours are going to dry an awful lot lighter than they are now on the paper. So if you think that's looking very dark there, don't worry, it will dry a lot lighter than that. And I'm going to make another mix of the ultramarine and put a bit extra at the top. feel we've lost a bit of that blue and even put some of the grey into it actually okay and again squirt some rain around so I know it looks like I'm washing it off and I am actually washing it off but it's all to get these effects so I might think now well, I've lost a bit of light and I want a nice area of light if you go really close to the paper and really squirt you 
and get some of that light feeling back. Can you see because the sheep is dry there these colours are hitting her and running around her and when they dry they'll make a nice crisp line so that she's going to stand out from that very wet background. So just stand back from your painting, hold your brush at arm's length um, see what it looks like from a distance and you could play around with this all day adding and taking away paint it's just it's quite good fun really I think it's probably looking okay at that and what I'm going to do now is just get some fairly neat burnt sienna straight from the palette and just do a few grassy shapes brackeny shapes one or two sort of suggestive lines just make it look as as if she's not just flying in space she has got something to stand on there um. you can see that's fairly thick paint but then again this paper is very, very wet now, um, so that will dry a lot lighter. So just standing back, looking where I think I need a little bit extra. And actually I'm going to leave it at that. So now I need to leave that to completely dry before I come back and put a little bit more colour on the sheet. Okay, so that's more or less dry. Um, so now we need to move on to the sheep. So I'll get a slightly small, smaller brush, if I can find one. And we just need the same colour for the fleece really, of the burnt sienna. I'm not actually looking at the photograph of this anymore, I'm just doing the colours out of my head really. So we've already got some of those tones there where the neck and the shoulders and things are going, made from wet, the ink. So if we just pop the sienna over the top of the ink, we've already got the dark tones there, we don't need to worry about those. I think the whole thing should be a little bit darker than that. She's very dark, her body's very dark compared to her face, so let's just make that a bit darker so a bit stronger pigment. And I might even put a, gonna put another colour in now. I'm gonna put a touch of um, burnt umber in as well. I'm doing this while the first wash is still um, quite wet. I'm following some of those earlier ink lines with my brush. But then I'm going to add a little touch of ultramarine to the same mix, again to make it darker. But don't to lose all that red because they are quite gingery red, um, especially where the, the sun's on the fleece. So 
So obviously they're going to be darker underneath here where the sun can't get to the, their underside. Painting at a bit of an angle so that you can see um, with the tripod at that side there. Okay, so that's looking okay. And I think the colour inside her ears is actually a very dark colour. Um, so I'll just use that same one. A little bit darker maybe. And I'll use that colour just to put some detail on the nose there. And I'm going to make a very, very pale wash now of the same colour with lots of water and just use it as a shadow so that we can put some, because like I said, a face is white but still needs some shadow adding to it. Just to give us the shape of her face really. And I'm just now softening my brush, brush off. I'm going to get that bit out there. And I've softened my brush off, taken the excess water off it. And I'm just going to, sorry, softening the paper off, not just softening the brush off. I'm half asleep, I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, and not, her nose is still a bit wet there. And we're just letting it run in a bit because she's got, um, you know, there's your shadow around her nose and things. And underneath her, actually a little chin's quite white still, but there's a shadow under here where you see her own, her own nose and mouth are casting a little shadow on her, the end of her nose there. Okay, so most of her isn't perfect white. The whitest patch actually is at the top of her head here. So we'll just keep that little bit white at the top. And across the top of her nose where the sun's, sun's hitting the top of her nose a little bit. If there is any sun, the light. Okay, and I think I'll use some of that same grey colour to um, indicate a bit of shadow on her legs as well. I seem to have lost her back leg, this one here. Just get a bit of that pigment out. That's better. It looked like she'd had a leg amputated. And then I'm just going to take a touch of the gamboge because, like I said, where where the light's catching a fleece, it is quite um, orangey in places. So I'm just going to brighten her up a bit with some gamboge, especially on that side. Oh, that's nice. And on, where, on her shoulder where it's perhaps catching on the back of the leg. And we'll put some more of that underneath her as well, I think. I don't like this bit here, I don't know. I think that was where it was going a bit, the brush was going a bit dry before when I was adding those colours. So just take that off. Okay, I'm going to leave it to dry again. Uh, just a moment, I just don't like that when I'm standing back there. So you keep standing back and seeing bits that you do like and that you don't like and you keep altering them. Um, 
Yeah, so I'm going to leave it to dry again for a minute and then put a little bit of extra detail in and finish off the eyes. Okay, so first of all I'm going to put one or two extra bits in at the bottom. These could be grass or anything really, just suggestive lines. I just don't feel they're distinctive enough at the moment. And a bit of dry brush over this area where the rough ground is. So when we say dry brush, basically you've got a very dry piece of paper and you've got a very little amount of uh, pigment on your, on quite a dryish brush and you drag it across the surface of the paper so it catches the tooth of the paper and just leaves little areas of paint. Gives us a feeling of a bit of rough ground or something. Okay, so I'm going to leave the background now and the concentrate just on the sheep herself. And I think all we need to do is give her some eyeballs and just a little touch of detail again on the mouth. So a very small brush, popping her nose in. She looks a bit grumpy but they usually do, you'd be grumpy if you were stood outside in that weather. Oops. This easel, um, I've had it some time and it needs everything tightening up on it, it's just um, getting a bit loose. Okay, so don't forget to leave a little bit of white in the eye at some point. Um, it's always going to be catching the light in one area. But don't make it too big because, you know, she's at a distance, she's across the field. You're not going to see masses of white in the eye. We'll just tidy that. One eye is always more problematic than the other. This one was fine and then that one I've struggled with somehow. Okay, so I'm going to leave her at that. If we did a slightly bigger, you'd do a lot more detail in those eyes. But because she's so small, I think that's actually enough. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to leave her at that. So you can see by doing it really, really loose how you get a bit more of an atmosphere perhaps. Like I say, imagining that she's out in the weather, looks like it could be raining or the sun could be about to come out. Leaving um, some dry bits of paper, you get all these different effects. Like I say, you get that crisp line around because she was dry before and the, the paint pigment went up to it and then round. You get that nice line around her. Um, and lots of different effects, just piling water on and piling, putting pigment on and letting it run into each other. These lovely colours here, the way they've merged into each other. And it just gives us a really loose background, which then means that the focus is just on the animal. So it's all about her, really. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching and look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.